recording. Hello. Okay, so how do I need to make an introduction for this video um, or for my channel in general? Hello, my name is Vivian. Is that is that good enough? <laughs> I'll drink some coffee instead. Okay, so this video is talking about my planner. I will give you a preview. Planner, goodness, and um, how I use it. First, how I set it up. Second, how I use it. And third, um, some tips if you would like to set up your own planner. So if any of those three things interest you, uh, please continue to watch. Okay, so we are going to talk about my planner. First, let me give you an introduction. It is smaller than a regular size piece of paper. Um, I think it's about half, actually, this way, yeah. Um, and let's see, at the very beginning, there is a month view, which I don't use, because it's hard to see recurring events. Um, I wish they would just, you know, I don't know, take it out, or I guess some people use it. They have, let me flip through this. Oh, I didn't know this was in here. They have time zones, which is pretty useless if you're near a computer. Maybe people who carry moleskins like to travel all around the world and have spotty internet connection. Oh, they have a timetable, which would be really useful if my schedule every week was actually the same. Fortunately, it's not. And, okay. So here is an example of the week view, which is what I use mostly. And, um... Okay, so there are, there's Monday through Saturday, or Sunday, Monday through Sunday, forgot a day, on this side, on the left side, Monday through Friday are in the big boxes, and Saturday and Sunday are in the small boxes. I don't know why people do that, because I don't do any less number of things on Saturday and Sunday than I do the rest of the days. And then, okay, um, there are blank lines on this side for you to use at your, at your leisure. And this is the first day that I used it. I got this in August of last year. I got it from my bookstore, or my uh, school's bookstore, uh, for $20, which is kind of expensive for a planner. Like, Target will sell them for 4 four or $5. Um, but pretty cheap for a moleskin, and I really like it. And it, it, it lasts for a year and a half. So this, um, this planner ends in December 2013. Am I right? I am right. So this is what it looked like when I first started using it. And, um, you know, I'd write down my classes, I'd write a things to do list on this side, and it's pretty organized. But um, I kind of streamlined how I use this uh, planner now, and I will show you. So I'll show you this week, this past week. Um, just so that you get an idea of what the finished product look like, looks like. And then I'll show you next week since I've set everything up, but I haven't started crossing things out, moving them around, and scribbling. Um, there are lots of scribbles. As you can see, lots of scribbles on my planner. Okay, so there's lots of color, lots of, lots of movement in this sort of painting. And my to-do list is a mile long. Um, because I have an exam on Monday, so I had to like catch up, or not on Monday, on Tuesday, Tuesday. Today's Monday, and I'm not taking an exam right now, so it's tomorrow. Okay, so I will, I will show you what I do at the beginning of the week, generally Saturday or Sunday, or whenever I want to procrastinate on this week's stuff, I will move on to next week and start setting things up and figure out when I have time to do what. First, I will write down all my ob obligations. So these are things that I absolutely have to do at that time. Either it's go to class and like the professor won't wait for me, or go to a meeting and the professor would be mad at me, or um, go to yoga, volleyball, um, or run. You know, things that I pay for that I have to that I have to go to. Um, and um, I also write down like lunch meetings with friends, or not meetings, but lunch dates with friends. Um, like I generally have a meditation thing on Thursday, 
or um, like I don't know writing these things down the things that I'm obliged to do um, makes me do them you know like running at 5 p.m. today is just as important as um, going to my 8.30 class on Wednesday, 8.30 a.m. class on Wednesday, because I've written it down, and I highlighted run, um, and my 8.30 class did not get a highlight, so there's that. Um, yeah, so that's how I set things up. These are obligations that I absolutely have to do. If I um, lose my to-do list and I have no idea what to do in those spaces of time between my between my obligations, at least I will have gone to my obligations and, um, you know, not skipped a meeting with the Dean, which I have on Thursday at 2 p.m. Good to know. Good to know. So, that's how I set things up. As the week approaches, as you can see, my to-do list for this past week was really long. Um, my to-do list for this coming week has already started. And this is where I'll write down um, all the things that I have to do for class, for errands, for emailing people, for, um, what else do I do? I basically just study all day. So these are like study study points or study strategies, not strategies, study things that I have to do. And I try to be as specific as possible. So, for example, anterior medial thigh. Um, I've written that down, and then I could just say study, but I don't really know what to do when I study. I want it to be active. I don't want to just like take out that piece of paper and stare at it because that could be studying for some people, but it's not for me. Um, so I have written here number one, read, number two, flashcards. So that means that the first time I will read and I will actively read using my highlighter and highlight through everything. You should see my notes. I have like three different, four different colors. Um, so many highlights and circles, huge circles, arrows everywhere. And that kind of helps me for number two flashcards, um, which I do online. I, I make them online and I use my iPhone, my iPhone, um, to like flip through them and, you know, actually use the flashcards. Um, yeah, so that's anterior medial thigh, number one read, number two flashcards. And you can see I added this, um, this little bit in my planner. Well, I've been using it on and off, um, but you can see here, I've written um, an arbitrary, not uh, ar not really so arbitrary, but an arbitrary for the rest of the world, but not arbitrary for me, deadline um, on the right side, and so R with a circle, F with a circle, R means Thursday, so I want to do the number one read by Thursday because that's when I have my class, and number two flashcards by Friday, so the information is still fresh in my head. I'll do that Thursday when I get back from class, and I will have crossed those off by Friday, and it's all fine and dandy. So um, another way I use this um, this deadline on the side is if it's say Wednesday, I will scan through all of I will scan through this list of things, and if a Wednesday with a circle around it has not been crossed off yet, I will do that first before anything else because that is due in my brain before anything else, and it's the most important. Yeah, so you can see from last last week, some of my to-do list things didn't get accomplished. Either I will move them to the next week if they're important, or if they're you know not that important at all. For example. This application for this thing that I may want to do, may not want to do. I know the deadline is in like a month or half a month. So I probably should get on that, but it's not that important to me. So I probably, anyways. Um, that thing is not important to me. I won't move it to the next week. And it's okay that I didn't finish it. But all the other things that I finished were pertinent and important for me. Um, yeah, so... Um, as I go through the week, I just cross things off, um, and I have under each, under some of my to-do points, I have, um, like, littler 
littler, smaller to-do points. For example, renal lectures number 9 through 14, and then so I write down 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then I will cross off 9 when I finish 9, 10 when I finish 10, and then when I finish all the way to 14, I'll cross out the entire line and cross out the, the circle with the, w, or with the date or with the day around it. And that just um, crossing things out and seeing those little tick marks stack up. Okay, okay restart. Um, my camera ran out of memory, so I have to record the last bit of what I was trying to say. Um, I think I was talking about check marks stacking up, and you know, you know, check marks are nice. So yeah, that's how I um, finish the smaller bits of my the smaller bits of what I want to accomplish. And then crossing off the really big, crossing out the line is just really awesome. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about about the to-do list. Make your task very specific. Okay, so that's kind of um, going into the the tips bit of this video. The first tip is to make your tasks extremely small so that they're accomplishable, and um, to make them very specific because. You don't want to you don't want to like sit down to study and then have to spend 10 minutes trying to figure out what exactly you're going to do in order to study. So make your tasks specific and small. That way you can, you know, stack up those check marks a lot faster. The second thing is to use your planner. Because if you don't use your planner, what's the point of having a planner in the first place? You just write down all of your obligations and then put it in the corner and you don't look at it, which is kind of defeating the point. Um, you want to get everything out of your brain into your to-do list so that it's not taking up valuable space in your brain and nagging away and from, like, from your awareness and consciousness of the present moment. Um, so that's number two. Use your planner. Number three, um, use color. Um, using, I don't really have a specific like color coding deal that I use, but um, writing the things that I, writing things that are not class makes me excited to go to them and then like on the way go to class. <laughs> so use use color. There's so much color on this piece of paper that it could be considered a painting and there's so much like movement. Where does your eye automatically draw to? Okay, um, fourth tip I believe, number four, is um, maybe using some post-it notes if you need to move information around. For example, these are the, the lectures that I had to review for my anatomy exam and I was studying over the course of two weeks so I didn't want to write it on the previous week and have it be here forever and have to like flip back and forth all the time so I wrote it on this post-it note and I moved this post-it note to this week when I um, moved on to this week or last like three weeks ago, two weeks ago <sighs> whenever my last anatomy exam was painful <laughs> Okay. What it, oh, um, maybe a, a last and final tip is to write in your bricks. Like, when do you have bricks so that you can look forward to them? On the contrary to that is to write in your exams so that you know, like, when your next, next exam is coming up so that you can plan accordingly. For example, oh, this is a good week. I had an anatomy exam on Monday a biostats exam on Friday, but then this green little box with winter break in it is when I started winter break. And this winter break went on, you can see the green, and on. Then I had to go back to school, and um, that's, that's kind of another use it idea. Use your planner, write everything down, um, and don't lose it. I think that's all I have for my planner and for tips and I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. You know, the YouTubers always do this or this or this, I don't know. Just leave a comment, um, email me, ask a question on Twitter or tweet me, I guess. Um, I think that's all. So I will see you guys later. Bye.